The defendants used the power and authority of Kwame Kilpatrick's public offices to unjustly enrich not only themselves, but also their families and their associates at the expense of taxpayers and donors. Corruption in Detroit. Former Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick's alleged pay-to-play scheme unravels under the pressure of a federal investigation. It could send Kilpatrick, his father, and three others to prison for years. Good evening, everyone. I'm Diana Lewis. And I'm Joanne Purton. We have team coverage of the new corruption charges outlined in this indictment with Action News investigators Heather Catalo and Scott Lewis, who join us live from downtown Detroit. Scott. Joanne, for the last few months, the City Hall corruption indictments have been coming out in dribs and drabs, but today the feds dropped the big kahuna, basically accusing Kwame Kilpatrick and others of using City Hall to run an ongoing criminal conspiracy. The sweeping 38-count indictment accuses Kwame Kilpatrick and his cohorts of a wide-ranging racketeering conspiracy involving extortion, bribery, and fraud. Named in the indictment are Kwame Kilpatrick, his father Bernard, his longtime pal, City contractor Bobby Ferguson, Kilpatrick's former chief administrative aide and good friend Derek Miller, and Victor Mercado, former director of the Detroit Water and Sewer Department. Now, the feds are claiming that city contractors were extorted and forced to use Bobby Ferguson's company on city water contracts. They say that bids were rigged to make sure that Ferguson got a piece of the money from those city contracts. And according to the indictment, Kwame Kilpatrick uh, was helped by Derek Miller and by Bernard Kilpatrick his father to steer those lucrative contracts to Bobby Ferguson. According to the feds, Ferguson kicked back $424,000 to Kwame Kilpatrick. None of these defendants were uh, uh, had to appear in federal court today, but at some time they will be forced to come here and answer to the charges in court arrangement, arraignments. These are very serious charges. If they're convicted on the array of charges, the penalties range from 3 to 30 years in prison. Reporting live from downtown Detroit at the federal courthouse, Scott Lewis, Channel 7 Action News. Scott, and I understand some of why this is so serious is that the prosecution is using this RICO Act, Racketeering Influenced and Corrupt Organization Act, that's typically used for like organized crime or something like that, which carries more serious penalties. Yeah, and that explains why this has been taking so long. We've known for a long time that a lot of these people, Mercado, Derek Miller, Bernard Kilpatrick, were on the Fed's radar screen. We knew they were under investigation. Bernard uh, Kilpatrick's phone was tapped for a long time. Everybody was wondering, what is taking so long? And what took so long is this racketeering statute. These cases are very tough to build. It takes a long time. They're labor-intensive. So that's what took so long for this to come down. But now that it did, they've got something big. Getting an indictment is too not, uh, not too hard before a grand jury. Proving a case in court is going to be much tougher. Yeah, six years, I know the U.S. attorney said. Hundreds of witnesses they talked to, hundreds of thousands of documents. That all takes time. So we've now got Kwame Kilpatrick indicted. Uh, his father, Bernard Kilpatrick. Carlita Patrick was brought up in this press conference by the U.S. attorney's office. But no charges for Carlita, although I believe she's mentioned in the indictment, Scott, that she benefited from this illegal activity, alleged illegal activity. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to read the entire indictment because it just came down, but that we do know that Carlita Kilpatrick has been living a pretty good lifestyle since she left Detroit and moved to Dallas. So I think the feds are going to be looking uh, at where some of this money went. And the other good thing about this RICO statute in, in terms of the federal government is that they can reclaim some of this money and give it back to the taxpayers if they can get guilty uh, convictions, if they can get convictions. Yeah, not only prison time, but forfeiture too. So we'll see how it all plays out. We'll check in with you again later on. Scott Lewis reporting. Thank you very much. Diana.